Hi, in this session, I will talk about the length of the message that we can encrypt using AES in GCM mode. So I'm taking one message and I'm asking this question. Can we use one key and an IV to encrypt a very long message? What is the size of the message at most before changing the key? This is an interesting question because oftentimes we need to encrypt a message. Maybe the message can be a complete database or our file system. The question is, um, if we use GCM, what should we be aware of? You know, the, can the keys, can we reuse the same key uh, for all the blocks or the keys have to be refreshed? What are the analytical bounds? That's what I'm interested in talking about uh, in this session. Okay, uh, let's get started straight into the GCM mode. As we all know, GCM mode is basically counter mode organized uh, according to this particular high level picture. Uh, we start with an IV. Uh, IV is some kind of a random number usually. Um, and then that IV is incremented uh, in each space, uh, meaning for each block. Uh, one block is usually made of 128 uh, bit. If you're talking about AES, it's 128 bit. So the counter value will be incremented. And then AES is called. We get some random number. That random number is XORed with the plain text to produce the first block of ciphertext. And then the next block of ciphertext is produced in a similar fashion. We increment the counter, call the AES, use the output of AES as a key to encrypt the next block of plain text and so on. So the question that I am interested in this session is, how many blocks of plain text can I encrypt using the same IV and the key pair? Okay, um, for that we need to understand how the counter function actually works, the increment function actually works. The counter is a number, increment is the function. So um, I have two things to share with you. One is the NIST document, and another is the actual Java implementation from OpenJDK. So we can take a look at it and see how the counter is actually um, handled at the implementation level. Okay, so let's get back to the block cipher recommendations from NIST. So this is the algorithm for how the GCM is actually organized in terms of encryption. Um, what we are going to use is a block cipher, usually in our case AES, 128-bit block size, and an, and an AES key, which is anything like 256-bit or 192 or um, 128, it doesn't matter for our discussion today. The initial counter block is the, is the IV that I was talking about earlier. And then we wanted to encrypt some message X. X can be a complete database or a file system or anything you like. Okay, so uh, how the algorithm works is it's trying to figure out how many blocks are there. By dividing it by 128, you would know the number of blocks. Okay, and then it's uh, rounding to the upper side. Um, okay, and it divides the original message X into uh, N number of blocks, right? Um, uh, each block is made of size 128, except the last one, of course. The last one may or may not be a multiple of 128, so the last one is often special. We handle it in a slightly different way. And then what we do is step, num step number four, we um, create CB1, which is the counter block one, if you want to call that way. Uh, it's the initial counter value, which is the IV, right? Here is the IV. And then in the for loop here, for i equal to 2 to n, we keep calling the increment function, right? The increment function is the one that just increments the value by one of the previous counter value. That's the picture we, we saw here. The picture is sometimes helpful. So here is the counter two. How did we get counter two? We use the counter one and increment it by one. And in INCR is this particular INC32, which is, okay, what is 32? I will explain in a moment. Only the last four bytes of the counter are incremented. Only the last four bytes of the counter are incremented. That means that if you go back now to the Java code, this is the Galua implementation, uh, Galua counter mode implementation in OpenJDK. Um, I'm just showing you one particular file, which we can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so the, the most interesting thing for me is, is this part where the counter is incremented. And I want to show you how the counter is incremented. Yeah, here it is. As you can see here, 
the inc function that we saw on wikipedia as well as in the open as well as in the nist standard um, the last four bytes are incremented this is what's happening here start from the last byte and go over only four bytes as you can see plus plus value of n okay what is the big deal about this well the deal is this after exploring all the 32 bits of our last four bytes right of the of the counter the counter will reset okay so now now let's calculate how many blocks can be uh, encrypt using aes in gcm mode before the counter will reset because it's it's up to, it's a modular arithmetic right only uh, 32 bits are allowed um, to increment after that the clock will reset to all zeros or, or something like that if we start with all zeros after two power 32 atoms we will come back to all zeros again that's basically the point okay so if that happens in that position we will have the same um, counter value that means two different blocks for example maybe the picture is better here now say block uh, block one which is the counter one block will be incremented based on counter zero which is let's assume counter zero is zero just for the purpose of discussion it will become counter one and now the up to two power 32 atoms the same counter value will come that means we will have the same key stream at this point between this particular block and the block after 2 power 32. Okay, so so the conclusion is simple now. How many bytes can we encrypt in each block? Each block is made of 16 bytes. Um, so 16 bytes of plain text per block. Okay, to make it in power of two, we have two power four bytes per block. And how many blocks can we have? So I will just annotate here as text box. Two power four bytes per block. We said earlier we are reserving 32 bits for counter value. That means after two power 32 blocks, we will have the same counter value. Of course, we don't like the same counter value. So the, if the counter values are the same, the, the, the intermediate key stream will be the same. Now it's going to be a problem because two different uh, uh, plain text blocks are incremented using the, uh, uh, encrypted rather using the same key stream, which is not good. Uh, I will explain in a moment why. But anyway, now we have two power 32 blocks. In each block, we can um, encrypt 16 bytes. That means we can encrypt 2 power 36 bytes. 2 power 36 bytes means how many kilobytes uh, or um, even better how many gigabytes we can look at it here 2 power 36 is made of one thing i need to get rid of is this advertisement it's about 64 uh, here it is 60 oh one moment my video has blocked me let me check my another screen where the video Advertisement is not blocking me. So, 2 power 36 bytes mean 64 GB. Okay, this is better now. So, we can go back to the other screen and I'll select the text here. Okay, we need 2 power 36 bytes equal to 64 GB. So, we can we can happily encrypt using one key one AES key we can encrypt 64 GB of data okay so now let's think about what happens if we start using the same key and continue increment uh, and encrypting more than 64 GB of data in that case what will happen now is that as I mentioned earlier every 2 power 32 uh, block will have the same key stream because of the fact that only the last four um, bytes of the counter value are used as part of the uh, increment procedure. Increment procedure will not even touch the first 
12 bytes. Okay, only the last four bytes of the value are incremented. Okay, that's the, the important thing to note. So now let's let's get back to the other problem I talked about. Let me clean this now. We don't need this. Uh, clear all the drawings. So let me talk about another problem. Suppose two different plain text blocks are in, are encrypted using the same key stream. What will happen? Say P1 is um, XR. I use the word. I use the letter plus to just denote XR here, right? This is the XR, and then P2. So what happens? P1 XR P2 is same as C1 XR C2. Why is that? Let's assume this is P1. And this is C1. Okay. Um, if this this key that we are using here is the same key that we are using here, then what will happen? That output here will be the same as output here. Therefore, XORing two plain text is same as XORing the two cipher text. That's just how the XOR is working, right? The reason why it is so is that we can rewrite this equation like this. How did we get C1? C1 we got by P1 XOR uh, K1. C2 is same as P2 XR again K1. Maybe I should call it K for a moment. So if if that's the case, XR in both sides will cancel out the K. So we'll have C1 XR C2 equal to P1 XR P2, which is not a good one at all. Given XR of two ciphertext blocks, it is possible to reverse the individual. Um, bytes of the corresponding plain text blocks. There are techniques for that, and I have shown in my other video. If you know one of the plain text blocks for some reason, then you can immediately find the other plain text block as well. So, to sum up this discussion, if we use the same key uh, to encrypt a large amount of data, we should make sure that, at least in Java implementation, the last four bytes. Only the last four bytes of the counter are used as part of the key generation process, right? The other, other part is just fixed constant. So if you have one message, like one message means say one complete database, and it happened to be more than say uh, 64 GB, if it is more than 64 GB, one key is not good. One key is not good. So you need to have multiple keys as, as soon as you have more than 64 GB of data, okay? 64 GB means gigabytes, okay? This must be true, otherwise you have this problem that XORing the two cyber block, ciphertext blocks will give you um, the corresponding plain text blocks. From You can apply natural language techniques or um, some kind of a statistical models and so on to, to derive P1 and P2 given the XOR of C1 and C2. Much more easier if you know one of the plain text, of course. Okay, that's all I want to show you. Um, so today I went over how GCM is organized in um, in the Java implementation, uh, especially the counter part. This is the code that is doing the counter implementation part. What is important for us is that here is the code. If we have a small IV, say IV was chosen to be length one, for example, Java will internally convert that into a 16 byte a block, but then it will only use your first byte, and everything else will be zeroed, and then it will increment the counter, the last four bytes of the counter. That's basically what um, is happening here in this portion of the code. As you can see here, it checks the. Um, let me show you the place where it's doing that. It's all commented code. Here is the increment function that we talked about. And uh, here is the expand to one block. Suppose your IV is very small, like say you initialize it to only one byte. What Java will do is it will uh, take your IV, copy that into an internal so-called padded in array, and make sure that the padded in array is uh, 16, 16 bytes long AES block size requirement. And then it will use the padded in array to, through this uh, AES GCM mode calculation. And of course, it will initialize the, um, as you can see here, get J0 function. 
um, it will initialize the last byte of your uh, IV block after expanding it to only one, value one. And every time every block is incremented, uh, every block is encrypted, it will increment the counter and then, in, and, then increment, uh, and then increment the next and so on. So basically, uh, it, it is consistent with this particular uh, figure that we talked about over here. It starts a counter value set to one, increment it using the increment function, counter value become two, it will call the AES to generate the key, key stream, that is um, XOR with the plain text to produce the cipher text and so on. So okay, so the, the summary is that we have to make sure that the data that we are uh, encrypting using AES in DCM block uh, cipher mode has to be below 2 power 64, uh, maybe more precisely, has to be below 64 um, GB, not 2 power 64, just 64 GB. Okay? If it is more than 64 GB, you will have to use multiple keys. Otherwise, you have a problem of two different blocks encrypting using the same key stream, which is not good. That's all.